Hello everyone, so my name is Dorothy Kipao and I'm your presenter for chapter 13, which is entitled, What is Productivity and How It Measured? And on this chapter, we will be able to answer the following. First, what is productivity and why productivity matters? Second, what are the factors affecting productivity? And third, we'll be able to compute productivity. But before that, let's watch this video first for an overview. Meet Beth. She owns her own business, making and selling birdhouses. To make a birdhouse, Beth needs wood, paint, nails, tools, and her own labor. These are her inputs. An input is any resource used to create goods and services. It takes Beth one hour to make each birdhouse. The completed birdhouses are her output. Output is the quantity of goods or services produced. With experience, Beth discovers better ways to make her birdhouses. By rearranging her production process, Beth is able to build more birdhouses in the same amount of time. She also develops skills that allow her to complete each step in less time. With these improvements, Beth can now make two birdhouses each hour. By increasing her output without an increase in the time she worked, Beth has increased her productivity. Productivity is a measure of economic performance that indicates how efficiently inputs are converted into output. Growth in productivity is measured by dividing the change in output over time by the change in inputs over time. Beth could decide that she wants to stop working after she makes three birdhouses. If she produces the same output as before with fewer inputs, such as working fewer hours, then her productivity still increases. Increases in productivity allow Beth to either produce more output or have more free time, improving her standard of living. Similarly, the standard of living for the country as a whole depends on improvement in overall productivity. Historically, productivity growth has led to higher wages for workers and higher profits for businesses. To learn more about BLS productivity measures, visit bls.gov lpc. So, productivity is an index that measures output, such as goods and services, as discussed a while ago, are relative to the input, such as labor, materials, energy, and other resources that is used to produce it. So, it is usually expressed as the ratio of output to input. So, productivity is equal to output over input. And productivity is the state of being able to create, particularly at a high quality and quick speed. An example for uh, productivity is how quickly a toy factory is able to produce toys. So with growth in productivity, an economy is able to produce and consume increasingly more goods and services for the same amount of work. Productivity is important to individuals such as workers and consumers, business leaders, analysts such as policymakers, and government statisticians. So just like what I have mentioned on the previous video, uh, one of the primary responsibilities of a manager is to first achieve productive use of an organization's resources. So the term productivity is used to describe this. Although productivity is important for all business organizations, it is particularly important for organizations that use a strategy of low cost. Because the higher the productivity, the lower the cost of the output. So a productivity ratio can be computed for a single operation, a department, an organization, or an entire country. In business organizations, productivity ratios are used for planning workforce requirements, scheduling equipment, financial analysis, and other important tasks. Next slide. 
for productivity growth, it is equal to current productivity minus previous productivity all over previous uh, productivity times 100. So productivity growth is a key factor in a country's rate of inflation and the standard of living of its people. Productivity increases add value to the economy while keeping inflation in check. So productivity has important implications for business organizations and the entire nation. For nonprofit organization, higher productivity means lower costs. For profit-based organizations, uh, productivity is an important factor on determining how competitive a company, a company is. As for a nation, the rate of productivity growth is of great importance too. Since productivity growth is the increase in productivity from one period to the next relative to the productivity in the preceding period. Okay, so for example, if productivity is increased from 80 to 84, the growth rate would be, so as discussed on the previous slide, productivity growth is uh, computed as current productivity minus previous productivity all over previous productivity times 100. So this will give us 84 as the current productivity minus 80 as the previous productivity all over 80 times 100. And the answer is 5% as the productivity growth for this sample question. Okay, so productivity can be enhanced by the use of robotic equipment. Robots can operate for long periods with consistent precision and high speed. So for this picture, it is the Hyundai Motor Company manufacturing plant in Montgomery, Alabama that uses robots for assembly work. So this $1.4 billion automotive plant is one of the most advanced uh, assembly plants in North America. Alright, so for computing productivity, it can be measures, uh, productivity can be me measured, can be based on single input or partial productivity on more than one input or the multi-factor productivity or on all inputs which can be called total productivity. So partial measures, it can be output over labor, output over machine, output over capital, or output over energy. As for the multi-factor measures, it can be output all over the sum of labor and machine or output all over the sum of labor, capital, and energy. For the total measures, can be goods or services produced all over all inputs used to produce them. So the choice of productivity measures depends primarily on the purpose of measurement. If the purpose is to track improvements in labor productivity, then labor co uh, becomes the obvious input measure. Uh, partial measures are often of greatest use in operation management and uh, example for partial productivity are uh, labor productivity which may be uh, units of output per labor hour, units of output per shift, uh, value added per labor hour, and dollar value of output per labor hour. Machine productivity which can be uh, units of output per machine hour or dollar value of output per machine hour. As for the capital productivity, it can be units of output per dollar input or dollar value of output per dollar input. And for energy productivity, it can be uh, units of output per kilowatt hour and dollar value of output per kilowatt hour.
Okay, sample question. Four workers installed 720 square yards of carpeting in eight hours. So productivity is equal to yards of carpet installed over labor hours work. So it will give us 720 square yards as for the yards of carpet installed all over four workers times eight hours per worker. So 720 yards all over uh, 32 hours, it will give us 22.5 yards per hour as the productivity. So next, determine the multi-factor productivity for the combined input of labor and machine time using the following data. For output, 7,040 units. And for the input, labor costs $1,000, materials cost $520, and overhead cost $2,000. So multi-factor productivity is equal to output over the sum of labor, materials, and overhead. So this will give us 7,040 uh, 7, units all over the sum of $1,000. Uh, $520 and $2,000 and multi-factor productivity is equal to uh, 2 units per dollar input. So calculations of multi-factor productivity measure inputs and outputs using a common unit of measurement such as cost. So overheads are business costs that are related to the day-to-day -day running of a business. So why productivity matters? Productivity measure are useful on a number of levels. So for an individual department or organization, productivity measure can be used to track performance over time. And these allow manager to judge performance and to decide where improvements are needed. So, for example, if productivity has slipped in a certain area, operation staff can examine the factors used to compute productivity to determine uh, what has changed and then devise a means of improving productivity in subsequent periods. And in essence, productivity measurements serve as scorecards too. Uh, scorecards of the effective use of resources. So business leaders are concerned with uh, productivity as it relates to competitiveness. So business leaders are concerned with productivity as it relates to competitiveness. If two firms both have the same level of output, but one requires less input because of higher productivity, that one will be able to charge a lower price and consequently increase its share of the market. Productivity gains can offset inflationary pre uh, pressures related to wage increases. Productivity increases result in lower costs per unit. Those savings not only generate higher profits, but they can also help pay for the wage increases. So, productivity levels are important for industries and companies. Uh, for companies, a higher pro uh, productivity relative to their competitors gives them a, an adva uh, a competitive advantage in the marketplace. With higher productivity, they can afford to undercut competitors' prices to gain market share or charge the same prices but realize greater profits. And for an industry, higher relative productivity means it is less likely to be supplanted by foreign industry. But before we proceed with factors affecting productivity, let's watch this video for uh, an inter uh, an overview for factors affecting productivity. If you find yourself spending too much time procrastinating instead of tackling the task at hand, you're in a major need of some productivity hacks that help you get in the zone, be less lazy, and maximize your day. Luckily, we have all the answers you need. So let's jump right in and uncover 10 useful tips to follow. 1. 
Limit distractions. It's so easy to get distracted from a text, social media, workplace gossip, or an interesting website. So the first step to stop wasting time is to ditch your biggest distractions. For most of us, the biggest disturbance is our smartphone. So try using a site blocking app or simply turn your phone off until you've finished your work. Two, get organized. Everyone's sense of organization is different. The main point, however, is to keep your work neat and your folders tidy so that you don't waste valuable time searching for information needed to complete a task. In addition, you could organize your tasks by creating a long-term and short-term to-do list. Three, schedule your time. Your time is precious. To make sure you get the most out of your time, add time allocations to your daily plan. For example, you may want to wake up in the morning and spend an hour working out, making breakfast, or catching up on the news. Then when you get to work, you could schedule in one hour to complete a report before you check your emails and complete any other tasks. Four, tackle must-do tasks first. It's easy to keep putting off your most important task, mainly because you're scared of getting it wrong. However, there's never going to be a good time. So tackle your most essential and hardest task before you move on to anything else. Five, delegate like a boss. Unless you're superhuman, you won't be able to handle everything. So it's imperative to delegate or outsource jobs. This will help you focus on the projects that you're good at without letting menial tasks get in the way. Six, invest in your health. Believe it or not, what you eat and drink does have a knock-on effect on your productivity. Greasy and heavy foods will leave you feeling sluggish, while wholesome snacks will keep you fueled throughout the day. A little bit of exercise will also keep your blood pumping, and it will help you feel more energized and productive. Seven, set goals. You should regularly set yourself goals and deadlines to work towards and achieve. For example, if you want to ace an exam or get a promotion, you'll need to create actionable steps to help you meet your objectives. Eight, Stop multitasking. The benefits of multitasking are actually a myth. Research over the past decade has shown that consistently switching between tasks can cause mental blocks and lower your IQ. While it's hard to avoid multitasking in a busy environment, it's important to try and focus on one project at a time. Nine, take regular breaks. Bored of sitting in the same spot, going over the same work? We don't blame you. To help you lift your mood, take regular breaks to avoid slumping into a sleepy state of mind. You can also add some rewards into the mix. For example, if you work for 40 minutes straight and manage to complete your task, reward yourself with one of your favorite biscuits. 10. Have a clean working environment. Having a clean working environment will keep you away from distractions. This can include an empty inbox, a tidy filing cabinet, and an organized desk area. It's best if you tidy up once you've finished for the day so that you can start fresh the following morning. Now that you're well equipped with the best ways to be productive, you'll be much more prepared in any school or work environment. But if you're looking for more tips and tricks, visit careeraddict.com for more advice. And don't. All right, so a commonly held misconception is that. Workers are the main determinant of productivity. According to the theory, the route to productivity gains involves getting employees to work harder. However, the fact is that many productivity gains in the past have come from technological improvements such as uh, automation, GPS devices, copiers and scanners, calculators, smartphones, the internet and search engines, computers, applications, uh, voicemail, cellular phones, email, 3D printing, radio frequency ID tags, and many more. However, technology alone would guarantee productivity gains, so it must be used wisely. Uh, without careful planning, technology can actually reduce the productivity, especially if it leads to inflexibility, high cost, or mismatch operations. So another current productivity pitfall results from employees' use of computers or smartphones for non-work-related activities. For example, playing uh, e-games or 
checking stock prices or sports scores on the internet or smartphones, uh, texting or chatting with friends and relatives. So one factor affecting productivity is the standardizing uh, processes and procedures wherever possible to reduce variability can have a significant benefit for both productivity and the quality. Second, quality differences may also distort productivity measurements. Quality is now uh, much higher than it was then, but uh, there's no simple way to incorporate quality improvements into productivity measurements. Next is the use of internet can also lower cost of wide range of transactions, thereby increasing productivity. So it's likely that this effect will continue to increase productivity in the foreseeable future. Uh, computer viruses can also have an immense negative impact of productivity. Uh, new workers tend to have lower productivity than seasoned workers. Thus, growing companies may experience a productivity lag. Next is safety. Can also be, uh, can sh uh, should be addressed as well because accidents can take a toll on productivity. Incentive plans that uh, reward productivity increases can also boost productivity among employees. And lastly, design of the workplace. Uh, for example, having tools and other work items within easy reach can positively impact productivity. So overall, factors affecting productivity can be individual environmental or can be the process or the SOP itself. And as Paul Kerman of the Age of Diminishing Expectation year 1994 said, productivity isn't everything but in the long run it is almost everything. A country's ability to improve its standard of living over time depends uh, almost entirely on its ability to raise its output per worker. So overall, do not be confused with uh, productivity and efficiency. Uh, efficiency is a narrower concept that pertains to getting the most out of a fixed set of resources, while productivity is a broader concept that pertains to effective use of overall resources so this br this brings me to the end of my presentation let me know if you have questions thank you